Well, Betty, let me tell you, when we pulled back there, I have never seen the amount of stuff that come out of this building. The haul you guys have been waiting for, the Hoarder House haul. So, <laughs> it was funny because last weekend, uh, my husband and I had Miles, our grandson. And on Saturday morning, we were going to take him down to see the trains. Well, I got to look in online to just see if there was any garage sales because it's just now starting to get to garage sale season and... I didn't know if there would be any. It was awful nice that day, but I looked on, there was about, I think four, four or five garage sales. We ended up only going to two. The first one we went to was the hoarder house. <laughs> so when we got to where the house was, there was no sign. And I was like, are they having a garage sale here? I said, there's not even a sign up. But there was, they live kind of back off the road and the gate was open to the property. So we went ahead and turned in there. Well, buddy, let me tell you, when we pulled back there, I have never seen the amount of stuff that come out of this building. So evidently, some of her family members came over and cleaned out the building. I don't know if it, I think she said it was her son's. Well, instead of putting all the boxes down, you know, out where you could see everything, they just piled everything up on top of everything else. It was like a big mound. So you had to go through, I had to go through and pull out boxes and go through stuff. And it was kind of like everything was nasty. I mean, it was bad. I don't know how long that stuff had been in that building, but it was bad. So <laughs> I had to get everything cleaned up before I could even think about doing this haul for you guys. Cause it was, I mean, it was bad. Well, when we got there, she had this, um, trailer that was mounded up with more stuff that she said was getting ready to go to the dump. So <laughs> I didn't go through that because I thought, I just kind of briefly looked at it and I was like, eh, I don't know. I'm going to go over here and look at this other stuff. Long story short, I spent $60 for everything you are going to see. And I'm going to have to break it into two videos because it's going to take too long because I've got couple stories also. <laughs> I guess with that being said, we'll just go ahead and get started and I'll kind of tell you all a little bit about, um, you know, a little story of what happened. So, um, let's see here. Where should I start? Oh my gosh. Okay, I'll just start with these. I can start with anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Um, I got these shot glasses and they look like this. This is like... Um, I'm not exactly sure. It's got 1915, 1866, 1834. Right there is the United States of America. So I'm not really sure about this. Some of the stuff that I got, I've already looked up and some I have not. Um, they, this I have not looked up. Then I got this. This is a um, barber quartet shop singer, barber shop quartet singer shot glass. Um, these don't go for a whole lot, maybe five bucks online, but I got this for my antique booth. And then next up, I got the salt and pepper shakers. I thought those were really cute. Um, they do have a little bit of rust on them. I have cleaned them up though, um, but I thought those were really cool. I got these salt and pepper shakers. More clowns, but I thought they were cool. Um, they look like this. And I guess it's a drunk clown. I don't know. <laughs> Hanging on to an outhouse, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, that it has the stopper in this one, but the stopper for this one is inside there. And I do not know how to get that out. If you guys know how to get that out, let me know. <laughs> and then I got this. I have looked this up, and there are some similar to this, but not exactly like this one. It's a vintage uh, camel lighter. And the flint's still in it. It does spark. Uh, but I think it needs uh, oil uh, or, uh, you know, fuel in it. But like I said, I have not, um, I haven't seen another one online like this one. 
So, and I think the ones that are similar to this, the Camel Eyes, they do pretty good. So that was good. Then I got this uh, Gary Larson, The Far Side. It's the Boneless Chicken Ranch. <laughs> uh, just like that. Really good shape. Uh, these, these do pretty good. Do pretty good. Um, I think there was one sold for like maybe $15 or something like that. So not too bad. Um, and then I picked up this carved, wooden carved box. And it's got this um, inlay kind of stuff. And you can tell it's old by what it's lined with. There's no markings on the bottom. So that that's, I thought that was really pretty. Um, I don't know, see about that. Most of the stuff that I got was for my antique booth. So, um, then I got this. Uh, this one says Caribbean Rounds, and it is a, a cigar box. It's pretty rough. Like I said, all of, I mean, all that stuff was nasty. Oh, it was bad. Then I got this little um, pig, and it's a bank, and it's wrapped, and it's sitting on this wooden, like, little... Thing, but it's a bank. Then I got these uh, BC glasses, the BC comics. And the reason I got these is because I have a picture that has BC comics on it, just the, the lone picture. And I thought what I would do is put these with the picture and try to sell it as a set because the pictures in my antique booth, it's not doing very good. Um, but I thought maybe if it had glasses with it, it might do better. Then again, it may not. So anyway, that's why I got these. And they're in good shape. Let's see. Then I got this. This is just a home co plastic uh, wall decor piece. It's a black teapot. I don't know how these do, but you know, like I said, a lot of this stuff I got for my antique booth. So got that. <laughs> I got some cast iron kettles. This one here. It's pretty rough. Um, but my brother-in-law cleans up cast iron and he mostly does skillets, but, um, I sent the picture to my sister and I was like, I've got a project for Jerry when he gets back there in Florida right now. So, um, she said, Oh, I don't know if he can do that. He's used to the skillets. And I said, well, he can try it. And if he can, it's fine. And then I got this cast iron tea kettle <laughs> and it's got the lid like that. Um, got a little bit of rust on it, but like I said, hopefully um, he can work on that and kind of fix it up for me. I did look those cast iron tea kettles up and okay. hoping if he can get it cleaned up pretty good, I can get maybe about 40 to 50 for that, hopefully. Um, and then I got this little bunny rabbit. This is not old, I just got this for my booth. I thought it was just really cute with this little bonnet on it and it's a um, flower vase, put flowers in. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not old, I know it's not. But anyway, I just thought that was super cute and I gotta get him to my booth, or get her <laughs> to my booth quick because Easter's almost here. Um, and then I got this, yes, another cookie jar. <laughs> This is not old, but it's two little snowmen sledding. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Oh, I thought that was so cute. That will go in my antique booth next Christmas. Um, but yeah, I thought that was just really, really cute. Okay. I've got some purses that I did not get at that Porter house. I got this from... Another lady that I have private picked from before, and uh, I found out that she had some uh, coach purses for sale. So I went to her house and picked those up. I'll show them to you in just a second. Um, I got these cushions, and these remind me, um, Jeffrey, if you're watching, <laughs> from Real Nifty Vintage, he loves the Franciscan Ivy. And when I saw these, I thought about him because they kind of look like that Franciscan Ivy pattern. Um, these are Waverly Home Fashions. I got four of these are in really good condition and I got them to use uh, out, outside on my patio on my for my chairs out there because I thought that they would uh, they would look really cute out there. 
And then I got this John Deere sign. Uh, this farm uses quality equipment, John Deere. I do not believe that this is old. It's just a parking sign, but uh, I thought that would be a um, good booth item. This right here. Okay, I got a story before I tell you this. So after I got finished uh, getting what I was gonna get, I went over and started looking on that trailer because they had not left yet, and I found a bunch of more stuff. And she said that trailer was going to the dump. <laughs> Some of the stuff that I got out of there, well, uh, these salt and pepper shakers I got out of there. These salt and pepper shakers, the clown ones I got out of there. And the BC cups I got out of there. This lamp I got out of there. And some of the other stuff that I'm going to show you in the next video, or part two of this video, I got out of there. And I figured that since it was going to the dump, that whatever I wanted off there, that I could just, you know, take it since it was going to the dump. Nope. <laughs> when I got finished getting the stuff out of there, I was like, okay, I've got everything off the trailer. I don't know you, friend, this, do you? Oh, yeah, yeah, you do. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it's going to the dump, but you're going to charge me for it. <laughs> anyway. This came from the dump, or from the dump trailer. And it is a Martha and George Washington uh, lamp. And if you all can see this, this is a, a Bakelite socket that was originally went with the lamp. And then it's got the little finial on top there. So the story with these lamps, there was another one that matched this. And this is a lesson learned. <laughs> I did not get it. And the reason I didn't is because the Bakelite socket, these little things on the side right here were completely broken and this top piece was gone. After I got back home and got to researching this a little bit, I wish I had gotten it because I, I could have very easily just changed out the socket because there wasn't anything wrong with the other lamp. It was just that that was broken. But I think I could have just put a different socket in it and sold them as a pair and I probably would have gotten more money or they would maybe sold better as a pair. But it's just a lesson learned. You know, when, when, you're, when you're learning and you're picking and you're thrifting and trying to learn about vintage stuff and what sells and what doesn't sell, you know, you, you make mistakes like that. But I, I will not make that mistake again. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought this was really cool. Um, I believe this will do pretty good online. I'm hoping to get about, I'm going to say maybe 40 to 50 for this, hopefully, uh, even without a shade. So we'll see. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to show you in this part of the video are the purses. So, um... The lady wanted, she had two vintage uh, black leather coach bags and she wanted 35 for both. They're really good shape, so I went and got them. <laughs> and she threw in another one. And on top of that, she also threw in, when I got ready to leave, she said, I have this big garbage bag in here I'm getting ready to take to the Goodwill. She said, if you want the stuff in it, you can have it. She said, it's got a bunch of fall florals and some uh, pumpkin, fall pumpkins and I've got some clothes in there. I was like, well, sure. So when I got it home, it filled up a huge box of fall stuff for my booth for next year. So I'm excited about that and stuff that I can make for my booth. Like, you know, if I wanted to make a fall wreath for my booth or something, stuff in there for that. So I was excited. Okay, so the first purse is this one. And it's just your basic black vintage. It just looks like that. And it's got the flap. And then uh, the zipper, like that. The inside is the natural raw leather. Um, and I was really excited to get these because these older coach bags, these older leather coach bags are coming back and people are wanting them. They're becoming very trendy and highly desirable. Um, and then this one, I could not believe how big this was. Look at this bag. <laughs> It's one of those, um, it's one of those like feed bags and it's huge. Like this thing is a ginormous. Both are really uh, nice on the inside and this is the same. It's got the raw leather and uh, there's the, the creed on the inside of that. 
So I was uh, super duper excited to get those. And then along with those, she was like, here, I'll just throw this one in. This isn't anything special. It's not any kind of name brand. Um, it's like that. It's just like a suede kind of with this faux leather. But she threw it in, so, I mean, for free, I'll stick that in my booth and put, like, you know, $6.99 on it. Somebody will buy it. Um, somebody will really like that. It's a cute bag. It's got this, like, studding detail on it like that, and then on the sides there. So, pretty cool. So, guys, that is it for part one. <laughs> like I said, I got so much stuff that I have to break it into two parts, and right now, I'm already on 19 minutes with this video. I'm going to have to do some major editing, try to get it down to 15 minutes. So, guys, if you like the first part of this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel and you like this kind of content, which is reseller content, I have an antique booth and I sell on eBay, uh, please consider subscribing. Please consider subscribing. <laughs> Hit that little bell so that way you'll be notified whenever I make a new video. And I'll see you guys in part two. Bye!